So here we are, we got our uh, takedown uh, portable tent stove all finished, got the door on there and uh, managed to put a little bit of a, a catch on here. Uh, what I did is uh, this piece that we had extra, I put over the, the front there so the smoke wouldn't billow out uh, when the door was open and I decided to to actually anchor this side uh, with some hardware and the other side is anchored um, with the bolt for the hinge so that one was going to be there anywhere anyway and so I just thought I'd put this one over here had a little bit of extra uh, sheet metal left over and just kind of did a little bit of a bend on that this part was already bent uh, bent that the other way trimmed it down a little bit so that when the door is closed, uh, just rounded that corner off a little bit, uh, we can just get that kind of down over the front and that door is gonna stay uh, nice and tight. So we can get our stove damped down when it's uh, cold and, and conserve some fuel and uh, not have to get up as often to, to stoke that thing up. Just a side-by-side -side comparison with the other stove. Uh, this is the, the last one I did. As you can see, used that uh, for three days out in the backcountry, and it worked very well. Uh, this one had these, uh, I used the strapping uh, for feet there. <laughs> and they, the idea was that they could actually uh, fold up. Uh, they would fold out to the ends and reduce the profile of that a little bit as well. Uh, this one uh, was 12 inches long. Uh, this one here is 14 inches long. The door on this one, uh, while it covered most of the front, there was actually an end panel which I cut out and then the door is laid over top of that. Uh, this one here had chicken wire on the bottom uh, just to get a little bit of room underneath the, the wood uh, so that it would burn a little better and I decided to do that for this one over here as well. So I just cut a piece of chicken wire, uh, you know, it kinda, it's going to get kind of bent up and, uh, and what have you but uh, uh, that way I thought, again, it's just something to keep the wood right off the bottom of the stove. Going to get a little better draft, it's going to burn better. Uh, maybe not burn out the bottom of the stove. And this is very lightweight. Uh, it's not taking up any space or, or weight. And uh, the other one uh, burned for three days. It never actually burned through. And uh, you get a roll of that chicken wire uh, for just a few bucks at Home Depot or your home improvement store. So I think that's an easy, easy, easier thing to change out than the bottom of the stove. And uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, got the door on, got the chicken wire in. Uh, I did weigh both of these stoves. Uh, the original version, 12 inches long, weighed in at uh, 4.25 pounds as it sits right there. Uh, this one here, a little bit more hardware. That one just had the rivets on it. Uh, this one weighs in at four and a half pounds it's, as it's sitting here. So uh, both very lightweight. Uh, the advantage, of course, with this one is that uh, it's essentially just got uh, three screws top, four on the bottom, and you pop those out, uh, two wing nuts for the take the door off. Uh, these ones can stay on. And that one would completely collapse down uh, into something that's almost flat. Whereas this one riveted together, uh, it's uh, it's a little bulkier. It's fine if you're putting it on a on a sled or something like that, uh, as I did. Uh, but this one uh, will actually fold down, and you'd be able to put that in your pack or or strap it on the outside of a pack uh, without having to take a sled. Uh, so that's so that's that. So gonna pop a pop a chimney in uh, the new one here. We're gonna fire it up, give it a burn test, and. Uh, See how it works here today on a nice sunny December uh, 19th day in 2018. All right, we'll come right back. So we've had our stove going here for uh, probably about uh, 15 minutes or so. And uh, seems to be doing uh, quite well. I've built a pretty good sized fire in it and I've got it damped down at the moment here. And just out of curiosity, I brought my digital temperature gauge out today. And uh, the outside temperature of the stove 
uh, 61 degrees there on the side uh, right at the at the pipe itself uh, we got 260 degrees 270 300 degrees uh, right in the back there at the front door uh, 40 43 degrees uh, right underneath the stove uh, still only 20 25 degrees 30 degrees so 23 degrees so as I mentioned before I, I had this stove sitting right on some pine needles and I can as you can see I can still stick my hand under there this uh, wood decking is not warm at all and yet the stove is radiating a good amount of heat so you know if you're concerned about uh, you know get something flammable underneath I certainly wouldn't put it on your um, on your tent fabric on your on your floor or on a tarp on a poly tarp I think you'd melt that but uh, I don't think you have to worry about any actual combustion underneath here I say I've had a pretty good fire going in here for about 15 minutes never had any issues uh, last time out with the other stove and it was only two inches off the the pine needles uh, one thing I did notice uh, with the stovepipe in this configuration kind of out to the side which is the way I had it out the side wall of my tent uh, it's definitely more susceptible to uh, backdraft from uh, in whichever way the wind is blowing so when I had this stove out I had a 90 degree elbow and uh, I was able just to kind of put that opening downwind so I wouldn't get any uh, blowback of um, uh, smoke into the tent so uh, with with a pipe in a vertical situation you get a lot more updraft and not as much of a concern but if you're going out sideways you just definitely got to be aware of which way or which direction the the wind is blowing so you don't get smoke blown back into your tent uh, so let's just uh, let's open this up here see I've had this kind of damped uh, right down actually that's not even really hot to the touch uh, the door might be but uh, there we go had a good amount of wood in there uh, still do get a little bit of smoke out the front here uh, so when I had it last out last time the other stove I always kind of maintained it in a either a fully damped down uh, or a slightly door slightly ajar position like that and so I, I catch something like this uh, I think works well to, to prop the door open uh, just a little bit uh, last time I ended up uh, just putting a, a makeshift bolt in there to keep the door open a little bit so if you want to get just a little bit more draft uh, you want to make sure that you can you be able to catch so that it'll it'll prop the door open a half an inch uh, or, or put in some other type of a, a vent device uh, either a pinwheel or something like that but uh, I was more concerned about making this airtight than than getting air in and because you can always prop the door a bit to get air in so with the door open about that much as you can see we got no smoke uh, coming out uh, to what would be the inside of a, a tent or tarp structure uh, good amount of uh, oxygen going so that you're getting very little smoke out the top uh, it was burning very cleanly in this kind of position so and still uh, a really good amount of heat uh, coming off there let's just check that again uh, we got 300 degrees at the pipe 350 uh, so so well less than uh, what I thought the melting point of the rivets would be uh, of aluminum uh, on the other stove somewhere 800 degrees I can't remember exactly um, but even fully stoked up I think when I, I checked before I got the video rolling again here uh, it was still under 400 degrees so I think uh, uh, we're going to call this uh, test a success here. The only way to know for sure is to get it out in the backcountry and uh, uh, give it a real test in the great outdoors. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope this gives you some ideas. Uh, if you want to send me a link of uh, what you guys come up with, uh, that would be appreciated. And of course, your comments are always, are always welcome uh, as well. Till next time, take it easy.